Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's Friday Morning Ramblings video, we're going to tour um, a couple of my gardens, but we're going to go out into the main garden, show you everything that's growing cool weather crop-wise, it's ready to harvest, what bolting means, but really talk about the warm weather crops, tomatoes, etc. But I also want to encourage those of you that haven't quite started gardening yet. Maybe you're watching a lot of videos, you're building up the confidence to get started. I hope that we can get you into gardening in some small capacity, help you get started. You can start with just herbs, you know, a couple of containers that are small. We'll go over container gardening as I walk around too. But you can use these. These This is actually a feed trough or a water trough from Tractor, um, uh, yeah, Tractor Supply. These are just herbs sitting in the corner of my deck, come out the side of the house. This is what I use for the kitchen. You can get started with something small like that. You can even put vegetables and stuff in there. That's deep enough. If you've been thinking about maybe getting strawberry plants, raspberry plants, or want to propagate a big space on your property, a cheaper way to do it is to do beds like this. These strawberries are probably three years old now. I am able just to keep taking the runners that come out of there, propagate these plants, give them to friends, put them all over the property. Same with the raspberries. They're finally to a point where these are going to get spread out everywhere. So I just let them grow. Uh, yeah, I just let them grow in these three spaces and they will be going throughout parts of my property. I want to show you what I do with them. Little garden over here, I think I showed this before. Um, this is so my wife can come out, less insects and problems and stuff. So she can come up here, grab tomatoes, cucumber plants in right down there. Pepper plants are starting to uh, come back. They were beat up over there for a while, but they're nice and green. That fish emulsion that I've showed in videos where if your plants are a little bit yellow, a little bit beat up, coming in from or coming from the colder weather, temperature changes, peppers, tomatoes sometimes look a little bit beat up. Give them some fish emulsion, that extra nitrogen. As soon as it warms up, they're going to start taking off and they look pretty good. Let me spin out of my shadow here. So this is like one of the things that I've been doing with my strawberry plants. Instead of putting down ivy or something that's um, invasive or something that you can't eat, I use the strawberry plants. I just picked oh, a ton of strawberries out of here, made some jam. But look at all the strawberries we're going to be picking today. A lot of them are starting to come in now. But you can use strawberries as a ground cover blueberry plants put in between them. So this is a whole edible landscape right here. All right, let's get out to the main garden. This is my pollinator garden and my butterfly garden, all kinds of different plants in there, but it really does bring in butterflies. There are plants in them, uh, plants in there for them to eat, lay their eggs on, but it brings in a lot of beneficial insects. Uh, the ladybugs, I think, like to hang out in here and, you know, bugs just reminded me that hum that you hear in the background, that is the hum of cicadas. If you're on the east coast, northeast, you probably have them. The gardens are really coming to life. Tons of rain over the last two days. Finally, it's a little bit sunny um, and it looks like it's going to warm up. The leeks are coming in. I had to give them some fish emulsion. I still think I have wireworm issues in here. The onions are growing. They just don't look right. Sometimes the leafy growth is twisted, but the onions are forming. We'll keep an eye on them. And wireworms came in on a batch of mulch that I ordered, and that's just one of the hazards of, of gardening. Sometimes you bring in materials so that it's a little bit cheaper, um, but they could have insects and stuff that are a problem. I think it's getting under control. The peas that I started on the wire mesh, looking great. There's a cicada for those of you that don't know what they look like. They don't have mouths, by the way, so if you see them on your garden plants, they can't chew the leaves down like um, grasshoppers and locusts and stuff like that. They're only a problem for younger trees because they scratch into the tips of the trees, branches to lay eggs. That can damage younger trees. The potatoes are looking great. Um, just want to give you a close-up on how the sweet potatoes are doing. And again, I think that was in the last video, they're all going to trellis up there. Probably tuck some basil in there too, underneath. So here's the garden. After a ton of rain, 
The flowers that you see are from bolting cool weather crops. As soon as the soil really gets into the upper 60s, um, really starts getting warm, a lot of your cool weather crops bolt, which means they go to producing flower stalks, flowers, and they want to produce seeds. So you can't really grow them. That's really why you transition from cool weather crops to warm weather crops, because the soil gets too warm. The peas are absolutely out of control, which is a good thing. Made a stir fry with them yesterday. A lot of people ask me, let me back up here, why I don't use a drip irrigation system. So in my area, that's how much rain we got in one day. So I get a ton of water. We had a weird three week drought here, but I get plenty of rain over typically March, April, May, June, even the beginning of July, where I don't really need a drip system. I do have to put up sprinklers from middle of July to the beginning of August, but then the rain comes back. So luckily I don't really have to worry about that. Close up, that is arugula. The roots or the leaves get a little bit more spicy, a little bit more bitter. I still like them. I eat the flowers, but they're spent you could try again to plant some arugula, but it really goes, now that the soil's warm, from leaves to flowers. So the flower changes. These are lettuces that look pretty good. The cool weather that came for, for the last couple of days has helped them out. This is the second cutting. I've talked about that. You know, I don't know, weeks ago, I harvested the first heads, cut them off, left the roots in, and now I have a whole other round of lettuce so just leave the roots in that's one that i have not harvested that's how big it would have been if i let those go this is all going to come out and going to be really transitioned over to tomato plants this is a tomato plant that i grew and dropped in this is a tomato plant that nature grew and dropped in and look <laughs> how good it looks like i said i'm not sure why i do know why i mean i start tomatoes indoors um it's a lot of fun. And two, in Maryland, we get a longer warm period, so we can actually drop seeds for tomato plants and other plants, and there's plenty of time. In other gardens, you may only have a short window of 60 days to grow tomatoes to maturity, so you definitely want to start them indoors. But just look how beautiful that plant is. I don't even know what variety it is because I had different tomatoes around here, but this was going to be a cucumber space. Um, and they were going to trellis up there some bush cucumbers, but I decided to let this guy go be surprised He worked really hard to establish himself. So I figured what the heck Pulled out my spinach and radish radishes in here I Dropped in two pepper plants. That is an apple yellow a cherry type tomato And I'm really starting to transition the crops over. I mean taking a look I mean, there are just tons of peas still on here. And you want to keep harvesting them. You're going to harvest from where they start down at the bottom and just keep removing them. Because the more you remove, as long as the weather's uh, cooperating, you're going to continue to get great growth and more peas coming from the top. Been doing a lot of weeding. Beets are looking pretty good. Carrots look great. These are much more closely planted turnips and you can see that they're going to be ready soon turnips are cool weather crops they prefer the cool weather you can get away with growing them in a warm weather you can put them into a shady part of your garden still working on getting this series going on my other channel with my brother he just got his uh, root pouches all planted up he's going to be doing a lot of videos on that channel I just want to slowly go over. Tomato plants are looking good. I've dropped in snapdragons in different places just to bring in flowers. If you can incorporate flowers into your garden, it helps bring in pollinators, brings in good insects, you know, some bad insects too, but the whole goal is to bring in nature. So if you're bringing in an army of good insects, an army of bad insects, they do their thing and it really helps manage problems in your garden. The peppers in here are starting to take off. I removed or ate all the lettuce that was in there. I'm leaving the roots in and you can see how it starts sending up new leaves, the lettuces. 
but this is a nice garden too. So if you've been gardening for a while, if you want to leave a comment to encourage those people that are on the fence about getting started, gardening is hard work, but it's not difficult. You just have to get started and really kind of learn um, what works in your area. You know, take the information you're learning on YouTube from friends, from other gardeners, and start applying them to your area. Bush beans are all in there. Maybe I'll put some bush beans over in that tomato I just showed you. They're only going to get about to that height on the cage, which is great, and I'll get a lot of green beans. That will be my first wave of green beans, or the bush crops usually. I prefer the pole beans, but this works too in a nice compact space. These are peanuts, by the way. I'm growing them really for the first time. I've experimented before, but I'm kind of going all in. Dropped in two determinate type varieties into this 20 gallon root pouch. We do sell these at our seed shop. That is a cinnamon basil. 20 gallons is enough for two determinate tomatoes. Perfect for a single indeterminate type tomato plant. I love experimenting in the garden. This is just sawdust basically. These are wood pellets that you would burn in a, a wood burning stove. You add water. They break down into the sawdust. So if you just put in sawdust and you tried to grow, the wood's going to pull nitrogen from whatever you give it um, for whatever's there and it's going to take it from your plants. So your plants are going to do well. This is getting jacked up with equal amounts of fish emulsion, an organic fertilizer, and equal amounts of the synthetic fertilizers, water soluble both. And I just want to see if I can grow in sawdust um, for no other reason except it's kind of fun. My acorn squash is a winter squash. They seem to do better against the vine borers. The winter squash varieties, that's a butternut, that's also a winter squash. And that means that they can be stored when you pick the uh, squash. They can be stored for weeks if not months if you put them in the right place. So I have butter, butternut squash growing up here. I have acorn squash in here. This arugula is a different variety. Again, starting to flower. I'll be using that really in stir fries. Sometimes I use it in stews or soups. And I'll just finish this up before you know it gets out of control. This lettuce, half of that was cut. It's coming back. So it's been pretty a pretty good season so far for me. I'm really happy. I love the look of the Swiss chard. It's a biennial. I mean, it looks like a work of art for me, so I'm going to keep that there. You know, I just think I rambled my way out of my point over there. If you've been gardening for a while, leave a comment to help encourage new gardeners to get started. Maybe just a, something you went through or something that would just give them that push to get a small bed dug like this, maybe pop in a couple of containers, but kind of take their interest and move them from learning mode and absorbing information mode and get them into the gardening mode. I think that would be great. This whole area was transitioned over. The lettuces are coming out. These are second cuttings of romaine, loose leaf. Got beans in, asparagus beans, pole beans. Dropped in some bush cucumbers right here to go up this trellising space. So as we walk around, I'll be doing trellising videos, but you can just see all the different places I have to grow vertically. And that's a great way to save space. A couple cherry tomatoes here. You can see them right in there. That is a midnight snack. And I don't know what that one is unless I go read it. Carrots look pretty good. Beets are coming in even stronger here. This was my, oh, there goes a the cicada. Beets are coming in strong and they're starting to form. When you plant a beet, it's a kind of, a, it's a pod really. It's kind of this wrinkled seed you put it in. Three or four plants are gonna come up. You want to thin, you can see one coming up here. You wanna thin your beets down to one plant so that it forms a nice big beet. This one I'll, I'll leave in there because it started forming. But you can see that the beets are starting to come up and you want to thin them to one plant so you get a nice massive beet. You also get tons of greens which you can eat and put in salads. So this was the first wave of beets and turnips. And look how beautiful they are. They are ready to be eaten. 
So I'll pull some of these out. And I like actually mixing half turnips, these are purple tops, with uh, half potatoes and make a great mashed potato. Um, and turnip potatoes, I guess. Turnip mashed potatoes. They're really, really good. Carrots are looking great. I see I left my hose on overnight. That's great. Um, more beans, squash, cucumbers. I'll be giving a lot of these away because my beds are starting to fill up. I'm probably 80% in. I also have the sunflowers that nature seeded again. Birds drop them in different places. So I'm going to be letting some of the sunflowers pop up in different places. I just like that look. I like coming out to my garden for food production, of course, but it's also kind of my mental wellness space where I just like walking around and growing stuff. Some stuff I grow, I don't even eat um, because I just think it's beautiful. So that mess in there are wild seeded Coreopsis plants. So when they get so tall, they fall over. Like this looks fine to me. Like I would love to have, have them stay like that. But then when they flop over there, that's just a mess. So now I'm going to have to rip those out. But I was hoping to keep, you know, a couple bunches of wildflowers growing in here. Here's another place where I'm letting flowers that self-seeded grow. They were all over the place. So I did kind of, you know, move them from here into this little space. But if we get in there's just some skittish, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a skittish variety of bee in there. It's a great pollinator. There we go. There's a nice one. So just having your plants, having in plants that flower, they're going to bring in pollinators and stuff that you want for your squash, your zucchini, your cucumber plants, any plant that needs a pollinator. Quick look in there. Potatoes look nice in my earth beds. Purple cabbage, not sure what that's going to do. I've been eating the kale out of there. It seems like too that these, you know, are still getting some problems, um, but I'm managing them. I'm using the neem oil on there, but it's a lot. There's the white butterfly on call. They seem to be missing this group. So when I had a bunch of leafy greens and cabbages everywhere, they were just devastated. I think it was like a beacon for you know, every white butterfly that was out there to come and lay eggs on there. These seem to be getting skipped over a little bit. So it's actually been like every two weeks, I hit them with neem oil. It's keeping things under control. Don't know if the cabbage is good ahead or not, but we'll see, it's starting. And then and I do have some broccoli forming, which I am totally shocked. Endive, second cutting, and you can see the second cutting is starting to send up these stalks. They're going to try and flower too. Spinach did that. The mustard greens. I've been picking that, but it grows faster than I can eat. You only need a couple of plants, like two mustard green plants is plenty. They're sending up stalks too, but all these flowers are edible. So you can, you know, pick all these flowers, put them in salad. So that's why I leave them there. That's um, bok choy, bok choy. All these will get revisited in August get planted so that I have a great fall crop of these cool weather crops. And because the temperatures are going down in the fall, these are going to be less likely to uh, flower. So I'm going to have cool weather crops growing, I think for September, October, November, and maybe even into December, because I'm going to pull out some of the tunnels. Pole beans. This is my uh, squash and zucchini. I mean, look how well that's doing. And remember, I think you may have seen me, I planted two in there. I removed the weakest looking plant about seven, about days, ago. seven days ago. You only want one squash or zucchini plant growing in a space. You know, they're going to get huge. These are a little more closely together, but I only have two plants. I can manage them pretty well. If you're worried about managing pests and disease, you know, put another foot between these two plants. But they're going to really, really take off. The garlic will be coming out sometime this week. I'll be putting in my competition tomato plant into there. No rush. It's just finally getting these regular warm temperatures. One tomato bed right here. These plants are going to be weaved and tied to this staking system. Now the beauty of just dropping in metal poles 
is that you can move them easily and put them where you want. If you set up something more elaborate, it's a little bit harder to, you know, pick this up and move it. So I do recommend single eight foot metal T posts for staking. They're about six bucks, at least in my area. Wood prices have gone up, so the eight foot wood posts are just about as expensive, but these are gonna last forever. The peppers, just doing really, really well. Now, feeding wise, I set much of my beds up really well last fall. Um, we'll talk about the bed down there when, when I get there for the tomato plants. So the plants are kind of reaping that hard work right now. A lot of the plants got fish emulsion early when I put them in. They were struggling a little bit, but now I'm just really letting them go. I'll put some of my compost on here, you know, in a couple of weeks. Um, maybe a top dressing of fertilizer if I need it, if not more compost. But if you spend the time really setting up your beds in fall, in spring, you're going to use a lot less fertilizers, organic, or anything like that. You can just kind of rely on compost. But don't feel like you have to accomplish that right away, especially if you're a new gardener. This soil, I, I mean, a little bitter. Yeah, I'm a little better, not bitter, a little better at it because I've been doing this for so long. But it took me about two and a half years to get this to where I want to. Um, spent less money, used a lot more compost. I used alf alpha pellets in there. I used uh, ash from fire in there um, to add in potassium um, and phosphorus. And the plants look great. You don't have to be perfect when you first get started. Just get the bed set up fill them up with what you can afford, and then learn how to amend them and make them better. You can see that I have grass clippings all over. Slowly but surely, um, I'll be dropping, you know, half inch of grass clippings on here at a time. Let the sun dry it. That will become mulch, also will become compost. It will also feed the plants next year. It doesn't do much for this year. I have my 64 ears of corn in. That's doing really well. I started that extra early. Last year, I decided I wanted to start this a couple weeks early and it looks pretty good, not even June yet. Another area of peas going crazy. These aren't being fed now. It was all about setting up the soil. And that's, you know, maybe one key is think about as you're getting to fall, start making your compost now. Um, even if it's not fully broken down come the fall, you can put it on top of your beds let it finish over the winter and you're going to have to do a lot less feeding of your plants. So this is just crazy. Now with the rain and the warm weather, tomatoes are almost doubling in size every week. So I have the four cherry tomatoes here. These are actually everything in here has been bottom pruned out from the last video. You want to remove the bottom leaves slowly create about a one foot gap between soil and bottom leaves just so that you get nice airflow and you don't get splash from the soil which sometimes can put soil borne diseases onto your plant leaves. Mulch also helps keep that down. But these are about to get pruned to single stems, double stems. My pruning, you know, is just chaos. I consider it more of an art or sculpting than you have to be perfect. But I'll show people how to identify suckers if you want to subscribe in future videos this week. How do you identify suckers, why you might want to remove them, how you create double stems, single stems, triple stems, or just chaos tomatoes if you want to just let them grow, which is what I kind of prefer. Just did a video on the containers. I won't go too much into that. They are doing really, really well. Now these containers get fed more often than the ground plants, which kind of makes sense because you know the roots go into here, take everything that I give them. They also work their way out here. By having mulch and stuff around here, when I weed, I just throw the weeds down. If they happen to dry and crumble, they go into, you know, the surface. This breaks down, provides nutrients around the raised bed too. When it rains, it washes in. So over time, you really get that mix of everything working for you. And you could have to use, like I said, less and less fertilizers, you know. Keep some for planting. Keep the water cycles available for emergencies. This is from, I'll link the video actually that shows you when these were kind of sickly and beat up I gave them fish emulsion and now look how well they've done they're good to go I might give them another shot of the fish emulsion just to get them going but they look wonderful they are ready to go 
and they're going to be trellised up there. They're cherry tomatoes too. Another area that I have for the insects, that's the uh, insect, the bug hotel. It's going nicely. Foxglove, different flowers, just keep them flowering. The muscadines are doing extremely well. They're like grapes. That's going to be a whole trellised tunnel of the muscadine vines. This is a root pouch, or this is a um, container for my vertical towers. I gave one of them away to somebody. But the dianthus were growing well, so I just flipped it over, keep the plants, you know, safe <laughs> for a couple of days and moist, and these are going to get transplanted everywhere. The red dianthus are almost indestructible, so I'll break that up and I'm going to be tucking them into the corners of this garden. These are all determinate variety tomatoes, dwarf varieties. Some of these will only get 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches tall. Just packed a lot in there and they're doing really, really well. Potatoes look good. Leeks are coming back. The watermelons are starting to go. I think I might have three melon plants in there so I might remove one but they're going to trellis up here I'll weed out this space and I'll let them trail around so this will be um, the watermelon garden the blackberries again I'm going to have hundreds if not thousands of blackberries these are the erect variety blackberries and you can see that they have not come out over here they just don't send out basically the root system all over the place and then blackberries pop up everywhere. So it's a nice way to contain blackberries by buying the erect varieties, which are sometimes called clumping varieties and they're all gonna stay in a space just like that. They just clump. We can kinda push through here. We'll spin around. Don't like getting my shadow in there. Just look at these. These are gonna be the first blueberries coming in. They're actually covered in bird netting. But mix up your plants. Towers again are doing great. Just a quick look. That one is the basil and tomatoes, determinate tomatoes. So they're doing really, really well. That's the blackberry patch right in there. And we'll just come around here and wrap up. Strawberries grown in containers. These are varieties from where I started in the beginning. Look how much bigger they are because they have more space. So you can space out your strawberries. Um, the plants will get bigger, the strawberries will be bigger. Or you can just do what I did out front, let them do their thing. But look at those beautiful strawberries. This is probably, if I pick these now, this would be my fourth time coming out here and just picking the strawberries. And maybe I only get six or eight at a time, but they're delicious, they're great for breakfast. So let's encourage gardeners that are just getting started to get something growing. Small pouches like that, you can put in two pepper plants, that's about 10 gallons. You can just get a metal um, tub, that's from Home Depot, 22 gallons. These are dwarf uh, variety tomatoes in there, Tiny Tim's. They got a little beat up, but the new growth has come in. There's gonna be tons of tomatoes on there. Let's just encourage people to get started, because I think once you get off the fence of, should I start? Is it gonna be difficult? Once you get growing, you practice, you're gonna love it. And let's end with, you know, my garden is not perfect. So those are habaneros, ghost peppers. They're gonna get fish emulsion for the second time. They got it a week ago, not really responding. I'm gonna give them a little more, get them greening, and then I'll let them go. The eggplant are finally coming back. So, I want to welcome the new gardeners that are going to get started this week for the world of vegetable gardening. Get out there, grab something to grow in, dig a small space in your yard if you have some yard, and get planting. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And there's so many ways that you can grow vegetables. Enjoy yourself, learn, and have fun.